By the end of this video, I will do something that I never imagined I'd have to do, and that is defend Greg Paul. Ugh. But let's ease into it. Most of you have probably seen my video on the first KSI vs Logan Paul press conference and the reason I know that is because you guys have been sending me tweets, Instagram DMs, emails, Discord messages, pigeons asking me to talk about the second one. And I'd be a complete hypocrite to act like I wasn't gonna do that anyway because it's good for views, let's be honest. <laughs> but I do want to approach this from an angle that I haven't seen a lot of people bring up. And it's important to briefly sum up the aftermath of the first press conference before we get into the second one. After the LA event, and the Paul brothers came out on top with the support of the crowd, KSI did a pretty good job holding his own, but for Deji it was pretty clear that he was very much a fish out of water. But I think in his brain that was a turning point, because very soon afterwards Deji made a bold statement to the world saying, I know all of you are underestimating me, so I'm gonna leave the cloud house, I'm gonna leave my old trainer, I'm gonna go full on Rocky mode, running upstairs, punching meat and lifting logs in the woods. So he built up his confidence, KSI's ego was already about to fucking burst, and the Paul brothers were now coming on their turf for the second press conference which gave KSI and Deji the upper hand on top of already being in a pretty good shape mentally. So what do you think happened next? Is it A. They took the high road and welcomed the Paul brothers to London with good natured sportsmanship, B. They turned into bullies and incited violence against them and their family, or C. It doesn't matter because you already know it's fucking B. Just days before the event, Deji makes the stupidest move ever. Last time I was talking about how this boxing match brings legitimacy to the world of YouTube, but after seeing Deji's video, and after seeing the aftermath of the press conference, what's happening now accomplishes the exact opposite. So let's see what happened at the event itself. Jake Paul is the first to come out and he's clearly uncomfortable, because there's a thousand people in the room who hate his guts. Deji comes out much more confident than before, the fuck Jake Paul chant continues, FUCK JAKE PAUL! FUCK JAKE PAUL! But unlike Los Angeles, Jake can't take control of this one anymore. He's like, fuck Jake Paul, fuck Jake Paul, fuck Jake Paul. <laughs> People start throwing stuff at the stage and the referee has to step in. Can we stop throwing shit cause everyone's gonna go home? He's like an overwhelmed dad doing carpool, taking the kids to school. Alright, stop throwing shit back there or I'll turn this car around. Shout out to True Jordy, by the way. He made a pretty good video explaining what it was like on the stage. I'm, I'm looking at the paper there and I'm not even reading. I'm looking to try and make it look like I know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> like, what the fuck is happening? Then Deji makes a period blood joke. Yeah, who's Let it out. Yeah, who's period blood? Let it out. Who's period blood? Let it out. And that would have worked if you weren't also wearing red. Hey, whose period blood is that? I don't know, whose period blood is that? Oh shit. Then they stand up to do a face off. And I was honestly baffled to see Jake Paul, maybe for the first time ever, so clearly uncomfortable and disoriented. Like he's not even facing the right direction. <laughs> and if you think this was a little all over the place, the next part is just chaos. Logan Paul comes out and he already looks like he's about to fucking cry. And as soon as KSI takes the stage, he goes straight for his throat. Welcome to London, motherfucker! You got a new girlfriend now. Oh! But it's at this point where I take issue with what KSI is doing. Because this moment shows how different the two teams are approaching this boxing match. Logan and Jake are clearly putting on a show. They're doing this to entertain. You know how you boy gotta do it? It's a show, man! Thank y'all for coming out tonight to the show! So he gets it. He gets it to show. But for Deji and KSI, they're taking this fight very personally, to a point where, in my opinion, they're crossing a line. Chloe Bennett. What's up, babes? Why don't you introduce me to her? Let me show, show her a real man! And I don't particularly like that I have to defend Logan here, but this is street worker catcalling level bullshit. Uh, apparently you only have 85% of your testicle. Let me give her the extra 15! It's just meathead bro talk, it's, it's not even clever. Let's do some simple math. Logan Paul only has 85% of his testicle, that's a medical fact. And KSI is offering to bring the extra 15. Which, I don't know about you, but to me it sounds like KSI just admitted that Logan Paul has 5 times bigger balls than his. It's just simple math, guys. <laughs> then he goes after Logan's parents. Besides your ludicrous mom, 
and your disgusting delusional dad. And don't get me wrong, I think Logan's dad is a fucking idiot who has no business even being there. But what KSI is doing is he's attacking every single person that Logan cares about. He's brought so much poison with him and the punches he's throwing at Logan are so below the belt that if anything it honestly makes me want to root for Logan. When KSI called out the Paul brothers he was the people's champion. We were all like fuck yeah because KSI was doing what the entire YouTube community wanted to do and that is punch Logan Paul and Jake Paul in their dumbass faces. This was bigger than KSI. This was all of us vicariously fighting the Pauls through him. He was our hero and the Pauls were the villains. And you have to at the very least respect Jake and Logan for accepting to play this role. Because they didn't have to accept the challenge, they could have easily kept pulling their shenanigans, making millions of dollars, selling their shit merch. But I think when they accepted stepping into that ring, they were expecting a little more professionalism. That's why they're showing up to these press conferences all dressed up. They know how to handle an entertainment event of this size. And listen, I don't like the fact that I'm defending the Paul brothers right now. I've taken my fair share of shots at them, but in this particular case, I have to side with them. KSI and Deji, but mostly KSI, is approaching this with a peasant mentality. And a people's champion with a peasant mentality can do serious damage. Most of these people don't understand that a boxing match is very different from a street fight. So KSI, Deji, Logan and Jake all have a responsibility to draw a clear line between actual hate-filled fighting and an entertainment event. Greg Paul, as much as a creep as he is, did not deserve to get assaulted and punched in the head as he was running for his safety. With KSI making it so personal and Deji literally calling on his fans to attack the Paul team on the streets, not only are they losing the respect of anyone with a brain, really, but they're putting Logan and Jake in a sympathetic light, they themselves becoming the villains. I don't know who's going to win the fight, but from a moral standpoint, KSI and Deji have already lost. It's like that quote from Batman, you either die a hero or you live long enough to make Logan Paul seem like the good guy. But I'm still looking forward to the fight. If anything, this raises the stakes even higher. But still not as high as the stakes for my fight with Wilfer. Fuck him up! Fuck him up! Oh my god, that was a good punch! Was it? I don't know, I can't see anything from here. Well, of course you can't see, you're sitting behind a giant pillar. Well, how was I supposed to know that before I bought the ticket? Well, that's funny you should ask, because I'm using SeatGeek. It's the best place to buy tickets online. SeatGeek takes concert tickets, sporting events, any kind of event tickets and puts them all in one place to make buying easy. They grade each ticket to let you know if you're getting a good deal. Green means good, red means bad. And it looks like you're sitting in a red seat right now. Oh man! Click the link in the description to download the app and use the code ANDRE for $20 off your first purchase. That's A-N-D-R-E-I, ANDRE for $20 off. If you're gonna buy tickets to any kind of event, you might want to check it out. So thank you once again to SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. Now please excuse me while I finish up this goddamn goose boy. It's the eye of the tigers, the thrill of the fight rising up to the challenge of a rival. And the last no survival stucks his her in the night, and he's watching a soul in need of the depth of the of the tiger. Well, the tiger rock and rolls. Give another damn in the jukebox, baby. Okay, we're done here. <laughs>